you have a bunch of guns. What guns do you have? I got an AK-47. Shoots a 7.62 round. Do you think the gun laws should be more strict or less strict? <laughs> <laughs> a local man who likens himself to the Joker, arrested on a weapon charge, is now out of jail and new tonight, he's telling his side of the story to CBS4's Hank Tester. I'm not waving a gun around at vehicles. There's no proof of me waving a gun around at nobody. Back here in South Florida, a bizarre scene playing out in a Miami-Dade courtroom as a man with bright green hair and his face covered in tattoos goes before a judge. He's accused of waving a gun at people in their cars. All right, good morning, Mr. Sullivan. You charge one count of ca carrying a uh, concealed firearm. That old Lawrence you saw with the plain face, he's dead. This is a new Lawrence slash joke. And I'm a new person. <laughs> What's up, everyone, and welcome to the Wide Awake Podcast. Today, my guest is Joker Gang. Are you ready? He is the ultimate Florida man, and he first went viral after he was arrested and his mugshot was released to the public. So just to start off with, I want to ask one question. Yes. Why so serious? <laughs> <laughs> okay, but seriously, um, I mean, wh where were you born? Um, I was born in New York. And how long did you live there for? three to four months and then from new york we went to peru because my mom's peruvian and my dad's irish so from peru i lived in peru for like six months and then from peru i went to miami florida and what were you like as a kid just a normal kid the youngest out of five kids so played a lot outside in the streets are you close with your parents closer to i'm close to my mom and my dad what's the relationship like with your dad my dad he's like a real old strict Irish Irish person. So like he has like old school morals and stuff like that. So me and him don't get along like that. And since I got my face tats, he's like disowned me. Since you got the face tattoos? Yeah. In an interview, I think it was um, your mother that was speaking. She said that you were handicapped. Yeah, I, th I told her, I told her to say that so I could try to beat the, the, the gun charge case so you asked her to lie on the news for you yeah <laughs> i mean i'm not mentally handicapped i just can't like read and write that good that's about it but everything else i do fine were you ever bullied as a kid no nah. i mean i lost fights as a little kid yeah of course but bullying no i used to bully kids in middle school never went to high school though so why did you used to bully people well, it was just fun <laughs> I was just waiting for you to say something. <laughs> and um, in what grade did you stay in school until? I dropped out of school in the half of the eighth grade year. What happened that you you dropped out? I just didn't like it. Like didn't care to do the work. I knew I knew I was never gonna go to high school or do nothing like school wise or like go to college or none of that. And uh, what did you do when you left school? Smoked a lot of weed. Stayed home, played video games. And uh, did you ever use drugs as a kid? I'm from Miami, so you gotta understand Miami. It's, it's a drug land, you know. I did a lot of cocaine. I did a lot of Xanax, did a lot of Percocets. I smoked crack before when I was like later in my 20s, you know, for a little bit of period of time, I smoked crack before. I never did meth or heroin. Started drinking later on in my late 20s. And what did you like about using drugs? I got you numb. You know, you're a kid, you just want to get messed up, you hang out with your friends, so like, you know, you, friends come with a with some pills, oh, what is this, Xanax, you know, so we we all got hooked on Xanax, they used to take all types of Xanax, the yellow ones, the white ones, the blue ones, you know, used to be heavy on Xanax, but this was like back in 2000, I'm 35, so this is like 2005 to like 2010, 2012, we didn't have to worry about fentanyl, and, you know, and Xanax, the real Zans, you know, they weren't impressed. You, like, we could take like 10, 50 of them. The worst was going to happen was just going to knock out for a few hours, you know. And do you have any crazy stories from back in the day? I've been, I've been attacked by my girlfriend with a machete. How did that happen? Uh, she went, I found out she was cheating on me. Went through her phone, and trying to take off of her purse and with like her drugs in it, so... She grabbed the machete in the room we had at the time and she attacked me here and there. 
I don't know if this is stepping over the line, but I, I also heard that you she fell pregnant. Yeah. She had an abortion behind my back, kind of type shit. And how did that make you feel? Did you want kids or? Yeah, I wanted it. There, there's a whole reason be, behind the Joker face tattoo, you know? I just, I didn't get it for attention. I didn't get it for clout. Like, I was engaged to a girl that I was really in love with. She got in trouble with the law. You know, I helped her out. She came to live with me and stuff. So then I got in trouble because she said I beat her up. And then, you know, I got arrested for misdemeanor domestic violence. So then I got kicked out of my own house because she was living with me at the house at the time on house arrest. So then, you know, she left me for somebody else. I didn't know how to take that at the time. And... Not too long ago, my best friend just got murdered in Orlando. That's why I got a teardrop and a cross on my face. So that's how those are my first face tats. What the teardrop and the cross? Yeah, it's from my friend Adrian Severo Lopez. He got killed in 2014 in Orlando. Can you hey, tell me what happened? Uh, drug deal gone bad. You know they shot him 20 like 22 times in the stomach, twice in each hand, and sliced his hand in half. They stabbed his dog in the face. The dog was lost for like a week. It was like, the case is still unsolved. So like, you know, and I had to wait like three weeks to, for them to extradite his body, like bring his body back from Orlando to Miami. You know, went to, that's the only funeral I went to, you know. Fucked me up to this day, seeing my homeboy in the casket all frozen up and makeup on his face and shit, you know. And did that have a big impact on you going forward? Yeah, it had a big impact on um, me trusting people, me getting close to like friends that I have and shit, you know, it, it, it messed me up pretty much. And then right after that, I met a girl that I thought, you know, that was understood me, that was there for me, that loved me, but she turned out just, just to use me, you know? So like, I got in a dark spiral. I always been connected to the Joker character, you know, like before I even had to face that, so. So I just, you know, I just lost my mind and just started putting more f tattoos on my face, but a Joker thing, you know, that's how it all started. And I mean, do you, you obviously like the movie Batman, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm a big, I wasn't a big fan. I mean, obviously I watched like the Jack Nicholson Batman, but I didn't never seen the Heath Ledger Batman until like years later till after it came out. And what did you connect with in that movie? I connected with with the character because how dark he is, how, you know, like if you read the comics, like he kind of been through the same thing that I went through. Like, I don't know if you see the killing, the Joker, like, you know, he was a normal man. Just one bad day and he, he lost his mind. Like, that's what happened to me type shit, you know, like back then I'd like, I was ready to die. I wanted like, I wanted to die like the real drug. I was ready, you know. Now I'm more mellow head. I'm more calm and collect. Do you see yourself as a bad guy or a villain? I mean, I see myself as a, a humble, respectful guy, but the beast is in there that can snap any given second. I just know how to keep him grounded and humble. And before I was like, I was real mad at like society. I hated everybody. Once I learned how to forgive my ex, it like my behavior got better towards other people. Like now I try like, I try to help other people. I see like, People going through the same situation as me, I, I tend to like gravitate to you. I tend to like go live with you, you know, mess with you in a certain type of way. What do you mean, people like you? My boy Taylor, that 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 guy I was live with, like I could tell, like he been through a lot of like a lot of failure in his life, a lot of disappointment, you know. He just like needs a friend, someone like to show him like they care for him, type of shit, you know. That's why I'm learning how to do, you know, be a better friend to people I don't even know, going through like struggles I'm going through or went through. And do you feel rejected by society? Society looks at me crazy. I, I knew what I was getting myself into before I got a face tie, but I don't even got a face tie. I got a face mask. It's more drastic, you know. It's not every day you see someone like me, you know. Someone like when I I live in the mediocre. Neighbors, kind of hood, now hood. But when I cross the street, when I go anywhere, it's all eyes on me. Everybody looks at me. You know, I, I feel the tension. I feel, 
I could feel people. I could feel people feeling uncomfortable with my presence being near them, just because the way I look. What else do you think is wrong with society? It all depends on the race, you know. Like certain races look look at you different, treat you different. To be honest, like I get a lot of hate on Instagram by people talking shit about my face tattoos. But every time I go to my corner store, which is a mixed black white neighborhood, everybody show me love. They like my tats, you know. But society, what they look at, they look at somebody and they think the worst of them. Like they just judge someone right off the book. Like you get judged off your shoes, you get judged off the car you drive, the way you dress, the job you have. It's just you just constantly getting judged by everybody. Nothing's ever good. You gotta have a job getting paid fifteen dollars an hour. Oh, you got a minimum wage job. That's not good enough. So like, no matter what you do, society's always judging you. Like I got fucked up teeth. Society's gonna judge me about that. Like once I get my money. I want to get veneers, you know. Society, like, you got you got to be perfect for society days now. Everything will be perfect about you. And I, I know I mentioned this earlier, but I don't know if we really covered it. Um, do you want to be seen as a villain? Because that is what the Joker represents. He represents a bad guy rejected from society. I want to, yeah, I want to be seen as a villain, but also... As a villain that gives back to the people in need. Like I used to do, like I used to give back to the homeless. I used to give food to the homeless. I used to clothe the homeless. Like I give back to people too when I can. Do you think that a lot of people are scared of you? I won't say a lot of people are scared of me, but they know I'm not someone to fuck with. You know, like they know the guns I have. They know I'm legally allowed to own them. Like. Everybody knows where I live. Nobody has yet to pull up. If somebody pulls up to my house and I feel threatened in any manner, I have every right to shoot them, defend myself, stand your ground law. You know, Florida, your house is your castle. So I say, yeah, certain people to agree, they are scared of me or they just not want to take it to that level with me yet in my own property. Maybe they're just waiting to catch me slipping somewhere in the streets. You know, I do got a lot of enemies. Half of them, I don't even know. It's just jealousy. And you said you have a bunch of guns. What guns do you have? This is a, it's not a Russian AK-47, but it's a model Russian AK-47 from America. It shoots a 7.62 round. It's the most reliable gun in the world. This is a war, this is a gun of, of, of war. Do you think the gun laws should be more strict or less strict? I think they should do more background checks. I think they should make it more stricter. Yeah, but I don't think they should take it away or ban them. No. Should they change certain things about it? Yes, that's it. they should. Do you think America would be safer if no one had guns or if everyone had guns? No, I think it would be more dangerous. Like I know, I know I might look crazy and shit, but I ain't gonna go out and kill nobody innocent. I ain't gonna do no mass shooting or none of that shit. That's never my blood, never will be. I got my gun to protect myself or people around me. Like right now, my 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 neighbor could be getting beat up by her wife. She could come knock on my door for rescue, and I have every right to shoot him down. The only I could protect me, I could protect people around me. So you think everyone should have guns? I mean, I think every household in America should have a gun. Yes, especially you know, I got, I got my, I got my my fiance got her little daughter staying here sometimes. So yes, like I'm gonna protect her and her daughter, no matter what. If you could change one thing about America, what would it be? We shouldn't need no motherfucking gun permit to carry a fucking gun because when I. Four fathers signed that bill that there was nothing in there speaking about you need a fucking permit to bear arm. I think every American should have the right to bear arm as long as you're following the law and you're not a convicted felon. Who did you vote for, Donald Trump or Joe Biden? I ain't vote for none of them. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't vote for none. If I would, I would have voted for Trump. What do you like about Trump? I don't know if you ever seen like the memes on him. He, he's like a joker of himself. Like he don't, 
he don't give a fuck. And I feel like he's he's more ready to protect America more than any other president, to be honest. Like, people can hate him, but, you know, he does have a point, you know? Like, there's certain shit that should be protected. Like, I believe the border should be bigger. It should be... Every other country has a border. Why, why, why people throwing the fit that America wants to have a stronger border? So you mean they should build the wall? Yeah, I think they should. If every other country has one, and they have every other country has one better than ours, they have electrical ones. Like, how do you feel about Hunter Biden? I don't like Sleepy Joe. <laughs> His name's Sleepy Joe. Yeah, I don't like. He trying. He trying to take my motherfucking guns away. You know, he trying to take my AK. Yeah, it's never gonna happen. Can't do that. Have you ever been diagnosed with any mental illnesses? I mean, the state of Florida made me, like, the state of Florida made me see a psychiatrist and a fucking therapist for the whole two years I was on probation because, you know, the whole choker persona, they thought I was crazy and I was part of my plea deal. So, yeah, the doctors were trying to say I'm bipolar or I'm depressed and, you know, they're trying to give me all these type of medications and shit. I wasn't taking them, though, guys. I don't need them. I'm not bipolar. Do I got anger issues? Yeah. Everybody does. Sometimes when I was when I was drinking, like last year or two years ago, you'll find you'll see videos of me on YouTube crying and shit. Like I was drinking too much. I was getting too emotional. I was acting too crazy. But you know, I'm I'm gonna control my emotions. I'm gonna control myself. And what happens to you when you lose control? I punch the wall with my hand. Cause you know. I battle, I battle depression, you know. It it get it got better, you know. I battle trying not to kill myself. So when I do get to that point when I'm drunk and losing it, I try to break my hand. So like you know, my knuckles are fucked up. Why I try to break my hand so I can't cock back my gun and shoot myself in the head. So you physically break your own hand to stop yeah. yourself from shooting yourself in the head. Yeah, I got to a few points my life when I have when that has happened yes and are you currently suicidal no when was the first time you ever went viral I want to say when I got arrested because that before I got arrested I was like ready making waves on the internet you know like through meme pages and stuff like I was hitting like 50,000 views 200,000 views 500,000 views but the people weren't tagging me, so I didn't count it as me going viral. I first, I would say I first went viral, the second time Worldstar actually posted me and tagged me, which was because this tattoo, I put fuck Worldstar Hip Hop, because the first time they posted me, they didn't tag me, so I felt some type of way about that. So then I got this tattoo, and then they posted me on their page with my Instagram tag. And then from there, I started, you know, my account just blew up. And then I had that little altercation with that guy, Boot Gang. I don't know if you ever heard of him. Boot Gang, where did you meet him? He, um... And what does he do? He was doing what I was doing, making funny videos, skits, rapping, stuff like that. I seen a video of him talking about he the black joker, he the joker, this and that. So I just made one video saying the joker ain't black, the joker will never be black, you know? I thought he wasn't even going to respond to me because I only had like 3,500 followers, some shit like that. But then he responded to me and just took off. You know, DJ Academics covered it. A lot of people covered it. It went viral. You said the Joker will never be black. No. Would you consider yourself racist? No. But I have heard you saying the N-word quite a lot. I could say nigga. Why do you think you can say it? Because I'm from Miami. I mean, let me tell you. I'm a, I'm a Day County Chico. I'm Peruvian Irish. In Miami, everybody in Miami is Hispanic. Everybody everybody says that word in Miami. It could mean we you could be talking about your mom, you could be talking about a guy, you like this here, that you could be talking about hey, this is the way we talk. It's a different culture, man. That's the way we talk. So you think it's fine for even white people to say it there in Miami? Do is do I agree it's fine? No, it's not fine. For, I mean, I don't think it's even for nobody. I mean, it's a bad word to say. Yo, it, get, it gets people offended. Yes, yeah. if you say it again, if you say it 
in the wrong color person, you might get knocked the fuck out for that shit, you know? No, but not everybody supposed to be saying that word, but it's just so I grew up in Miami. Everybody, you could, you could talk to anybody in Miami. That's the first word that's going to probably come out their mouth. And going back to Boonk Gang. But yes, I did I did call him a house. I did, I, all that's on, on YouTube. What was Boonk Gang arrested for? I think he got arrested for robbing Dunkin' Donuts. There's a video of him online jumping over the counter at Dunkin' Donuts and mm -hmm. stealing a tray of donuts. Yeah. And the reason he got caught was because his friend filmed it and posted it online. I think, yeah. <laughs> That's the most Florida man thing I've ever seen. Like, I know, I know, like, I know if I go to the UK, I can't, like, I say that word, they're going to beat my, like, I know other countries don't like that word, you know? Like, I can't even really say that shit in my neighborhood. Like, they, their own people don't even talk like that here. Like, every, every part of Florida is different. It's different culture. People talk different. You were also friends with the Island Boys, right? Yes. How did you meet them? I met them through Enzo, 954 Enzo. Who's that? That's um, one of their friends. And what was your relationship with them? When did you meet them? I met them in 2020 on Instagram through a live community. And uh, are you, would you consider yourself close friends with them? I want to say, I want to consider myself close friends with them, but I did tell, like, I, I knew them kids were going to blow up just by, like, their whole demeanor, their whole character, the way they carried themselves. I knew they had something. So, like, you got, like, I, I talked to them, like, a week ago. I told them, like, we used to talk. We used to hey, talk shit to each other. But I, right after I was dealing with, yo, y'all kids are going to blow up. Y'all going to be big. And I was right, you know? Look at them now. Do you want the same thing that they have? I already know worldwide, so that that that's never gonna stop. So yeah, I do want to be. I, I want to make money, of course. You know, do I want to be known, super known like that? Not really, not no more. It, the fame is cute and all, but that shit do get annoying though. You know, because I do go out. I go to Walmart, I do my own shopping, I do my own stuff, and sometimes you just don't want to get recognized. Sometimes I'm not in the mood to take a picture with you. Sometimes, oh, Joker, I follow you. You, I just keep walking past you like, I don't care. What's up, everyone? I hope you're all doing well. I just wanted to take a quick second to discuss something. So as you all know, I've been traveling around America for about a month now, and I've been filming some insane episodes, craziest episodes I've ever filmed. And it's been an expensive trip. So just before I left, I started a Patreon, and I've got, at the moment, a total of one Patreon. This is their name. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you're interested in supporting the channel and helping me do what I do, the Patreon link is in the description. I'd really appreciate it. And let's get back to the video. And how many times have you been arrested? Five times. The ones I saw were possession, possession of weed, uh, pointing a gun at drivers. That, that, they accused me of doing that. So they accused you of walking outside with a gun a loaded gun and pointing it at oncoming cars. Yeah, that's that's what that's what somebody called and accused me of doing, but that that didn't happen. Were you walking with a gun? What happened was I, I had beef with like certain individuals, some kids on Instagram, I guess they see me walking to a plaza by my neighborhood at the time. I was walking with my homeboy and this group of kids were in a white Toyota Camry acting like they wanted to fight, they didn't want to fight. So at the time I had a knife. So I was just waving a knife at the time. Went back to my apartment, grabbed my dog, because I was going to walk to my mom's place, which wasn't far from my apartment. So as I'm walking, leaving my gated community, a cop pulls me over. I tie my dog up against the pole, then put my hands on the hood of the car, and that's, you know, I told him right away I had to load a gun in my pocket. You know, smart thing to do. I ain't trying to get killed. It's a miracle. So then I asked him after, you know, I'm in handcuffs sitting down. I asked the cop, what well, was your proper cause for pulling me over? He said he got multiple calls of a suspect with green hair, with tattoos, waving a gun at traffic, which wasn't the case. Somebody just knew I had a gun, you know, because I was a hothead, you know, I was always showing I had a gun. So somebody just called the cops, made a bullshit story up, and they, they caught me. And how did people treat you in the holding cells? They treated me good. I heard you say on the news that you were treated like a celebrity. Yeah, I was treated like a celebrity. 
They put me. They put me in the medical, in the medical floor, like psych unit. Cause I told them I take the sands and shit, but they always do that. But I wasn't in jail for that long. I was in more jail in Pinellas County. I don't know if you seen the jail interview. What? Tell me about the interview. Um, oh, you were sitting behind the glass. Yeah, and people that, came and filmed that, the interview. That that that, that jail interview was from 2018 when I violated probation. I got arrested here in my probation office. I was locked up in I was locked up in maximum security, general population for a whole month till I got extradited back to Miami. So you were in for a month? Yeah. And what Tw was it like in prison? Oh, it's not I mean basically it's, it's it's not prison, but their jail, the way they have it set up is basically prison because you're locked up twenty three hours a day in your own like in your own cell. And well, what like, were the conditions like? Uh, I mean, nothing happened to me. You see people get beat up. I mean, you just got to know how to hold your own. I mean, everybody knew who I was because I guess YouTube, Instagram, World Star, like everybody who knew who I was. So like I had I had inmates giving me free art, drawing me cards from my mom and stuff. It sucks being, I mean, it sucks being a jail. It's boring as fuck. Especially being... You're in your cell twenty three. I mean, you're in your you're in your own pod twenty three hours a day, and then you're in your cell. Like, all right, say this is the, that's your cell. They close your door. You're in your cell for eight hours a day. Then they open your cell, up and this is the day room. You know, you have your little day room with the table, and then that's the other door. Like when you get out, they gotta open that door. That door closes, and then they have a other door open. So like, you're in maximum security. You can't even like. You see, we see all the inmates all around us, but they're bulletproof, soundproof windows. You can yell, you can't hear them. We got to talk sign language to other inmates and stuff. Do you know sign language? No. Nah. But people just, like, when they'll look for me, they'll just go like this. Because <laughs> my smile. I'll just write a piece of paper because we'll, we'll trade stuff in jail. You know, we'll trade shoes, we'll trade, you know, coffee. Coffee's a major thing everybody wants. Cool. I think we're done. Thank you for having me. And that brings us to the end of the podcast. I hope you all enjoyed this episode of the Wide Awake podcast and I'll see you all very soon. Cheers.